Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. In the past we've looked at the index function and how when you join it with the match function you can easily look up the intersection of a row and column and find the value at that cell. But there's some other interesting things that we can do with the index function. So let's see what else we can do with it in Excel. So here's a typical example of what we've done in the past with the index function. Here I have a drop down list of the four quarters of a specific year. And here I have six different territories in my drop down lists. And I have the formula here that has an index function where my array is B2 to G5. My row number is using the match function to look at cell J2, which is the quarters, compare it to A2 to A5, and find an exact match, which is the zero, and that will give me the row. And then the column number, again, I use the match function, looking at J3, which is the territory number between B1 and G1, and again, an exact match, and that will give me the appropriate column number and together when I look at for example Q3 territory 3 you see I have 33,000 and that's the value I get. If I change a territory number say to 6 I get 99,000 Q3 at territory 6 gives me that value. So that's a typical use case of the index and match functions. But let's look at a couple other things that we can do with this very versatile combination of functions. On sheet two here, I have actually four different sets of criteria, or four different ranges. Again, each has quarter one through four, and territory one through six. But notice I have the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I have drop-down values here again for each quarter, for each territory, but I also have one for the four different regions. And as I change the different regions, it will populate my sales value here with the appropriate one. So for example, quarter two, territory six of the north, north quarter two, territory six, I have 98,000. That's what I get. But if I want to do quarter one of territory three, in the east, I have 39,000. So again, east, quarter one, territory three, 39,000, it matches. And the formula that we're using here is and the index formula with the match functions, but we're using what's called the reference option of the index function. So if we take a look at the index function, as if I say equals index, notice there are two different syntaxes here. There's the array, row, and column, which we used on sheet one previously. But there's the second one that has a reference, a row number, a column number, and then an area number. And that's what we're doing here. So let's take a look at this formula and see how it works here. If I click right inside the parentheses of the index function, my reference, notice what I've done is I've listed the four different ranges that I have here, B2 to G5, B8 to G11, B14 to G17, and B20 to G23. Those are my four different sets of values. My row number, again, is a typical match function where I'm matching the quarter number with what I have listed in cell J3. And my column number, I'm again using the match function to determine the territory that I have indicated in J4. But the last function is area number. And what I've done is I've used the reference to cell K5. So if we take a look at K5, what I've done is I've put an if statement in there. And it basically says if J5 is north, put a 1, south, put a 2, east a 3, if not, then put a 4. And then I just hid that by 
putting it in a white text so you can't see that. So what this index function is doing is with the area number, it's basically saying whatever area number we have here, one, two, three, or four, use either the first, the second, the third, or the fourth reference of data ranges to choose the one we want in order to then select the correct quarter and territory from that set of values. So again, all we've done in the reference area is list the four different ranges. Now notice those ranges have to be included within another set of parentheses to identify them as one set of references. Then again, your row number and column number, and then you have to use some method of identifying your area number, one, two, three, four, five, depending how many sets of areas or references you have in that first grouping in your first set of parentheses in order to identify where you want the row and column number to pull that data from. So a couple other things I want to show you. Notice down here I have the all of territory 3 showing up for the east area and if I change this to north notice now I have for the North Territory 3, all the values for the four quarters. Or if I change it to Territory 1 for the North, notice all four quarters appear. So let's walk through how we perform that function. Again, here is the formula that I've used. It's very similar to the formula that we used in the past, but notice I have my index, I have my four different ranges, same as I had in the previous formula, but my match for the row, I just put a zero in because I don't want a specific row, I want all the rows. And then I have a match for the columns, and again, my reference to determine what area number I wanted to pull in. The trick with this is you first need to highlight your entire range and it has to match the range of the values you want to pull in. Enter your formula but you cannot enter it using the enter key. It's an array formula. If you can notice the curly brackets here. So you must enter it using control shift and enter. And by doing so since you have a zero for the row it will pull in all the rows instead of just one that will match. The same thing will happen here if you want to pull in an entire row or all the columns for a specific row. Notice the formula is very similar to what we used above. However, we have a match function for the row, but for the columns we used a zero. Again, because I don't want a specific column, I want all the columns. So I would highlight all six different cells enter this formula in and instead of hitting enter I would hit control shift and enter and it would populate all those values simultaneously rather than a single specific value. So this is some unique things that you can do with the index function in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day, and happy excelling.